Hello there, and oh my god, this is bright. I did not think that ring lights were this bright from this side. Okay, that is much better. And I swear to god, this is not a makeup tutorial, even though I am using a ring light, because I think you can kind of tell. I, I don't know what this is from. I think it's like a mosquito bite from when I was napping a few hours ago. My face is not at all symmetrical. You can kind of tell that it looks like I got hit by a shovel on this side of my face really, really hard. Like being swung by Donald Trump or something, and I, I mean, I guess I could show you, like, one makeup tip, like, how to put grooming clay in your hair to the point where it looks like you don't have a soul, but that's, that's about the extent of my, like, makeup cosmetic ability. <laughs> Allow me to start off by saying this is not a makeup tutorial, this is not a how-to guide, this is not an unboxing, this isn't even an apartment tour, because... I live in San Francisco, so this is much less of an apartment and more of just a, a, a room. It's really just a room because there's the kitchen where I don't cook, there's the desk where I make everything that you see on the internet, there's the bed where I go to sleep by myself and then I wake up again by myself and continue on whatever it is I was doing, and there's the closet where it looks like you're stepping into a bedroom or something, but it's really just a closet. That's, that's it. One final note I wanted to make, I know this video may trigger a lot of you, and I'm just like you, I have no idea what the word triggered actually means. It's a lot like the word literally. It was used so often, so incorrectly by so many different people, it literally does not mean the word literally anymore. Same thing with trigger. I just don't know what that word means because so many people use it in so many different contexts. I'm sorry to the half of you that this video is going to trigger. Because with these types of things, it's always half of you get upset because my face doesn't match my voice, and the other half are like, joyous that you can actually just talk to me like a human being, or at least get talked at like a human being. But beyond being triggered, I wanted to make this video because I get asked so many of the same questions over and over and over again, I figured that it was time to make somewhat of an FAQ. It's not gonna be too long, I will not waste any of your time, and I promise that I will get things started off with a bang. Yeah, these things don't explode, by the way. The first question I wanted to start off with is, what is your name? Now, my name is Spencer, but that's not the name that I use on the internet. Because on the internet, I'm strictly Badger. Anytime I send an email, anytime I sign a contract, anytime I interact with any kind of social media brand ambassador, I'm strictly Badger. Strictly Badger. That's mainly because I like to keep my offline self and my online self divided. Even though they're always going to bleed into each other, I try to keep them separated. And I know it may sound a little bit schizophrenic, but I would just consider Badger to be a very hyper-real, hyperbolic version of myself. Very exaggerated. You can call it a persona or a personality, just do not call me an entrepreneur. I cannot stand it when YouTubers say that sometimes. Unless you're a Michelle fan where you clearly started your own business, I go to all kinds of events and like sponsorship deals where it's always people introducing themselves as entrepreneurs. It's like, oh, t take a step back, okay? Just take a step back. You have a YouTube channel and you sell t-shirts. I don't know if that, I don't know. I don't know if that matches the definition of an entrepreneur. <laughs> so just to round out that rambling, my name is Spencer, but you can call me Badger. And you know what? In the corner of the shot right now, I can see, yeah, you, got, you guys can definitely see him. I didn't even realize that he was in the shot, but I guess since he's already here, I should introduce him. Oftentimes people will come over and ask me if I own a shark, and I'd say, no, that's not a shark, he has a name. His name's Clarence. So, say hello to Clarence. <laughs> Conveniently, that leads me into my next question, which is how did I get started with YouTube, and why the Russian Badger? And I started with Battlefield Bad Company 2 on the PS3. Basically, I constantly found myself at the top of the leaderboards, and I'm not saying that in like a, oh, top of the leaderboards, yeah, every... Basically, what I saw was that very often, I was doing better than other players, and I figured that a lot of other players could, you know, learn how to play the game a little bit better. So I started posting on the internet, hey, this is how you can not suck. I'm not even gonna say that I'm some kind of brilliant player, some kind of gift from God with a controller, but I can tell you how to not suck as much as you do now, and I think that would benefit all of us if we all wanna win more games. And while I was starting all that, of course I had to pick a name. I had to be some kind of title to the internet, and it took me forever. I remember sitting on PlayStation Network just like I have no idea what to name myself none of this is clever I can't copy anybody else like what what am I gonna do remember like pacing around my basement which is by the way significantly larger than this apartment like even the balcony is not all it's like 500 square feet if you include the balcony that's 
Some closets are bigger than that. It's all right, back to the name. So I'm on PlayStation Network, I have to figure out a name, and I eventually just thought to myself, this is extremely tough. I can't come up with a name. What else is extremely tough? And two things came to mind, Russians and Badgers. So there you go. The next question that I get so often is what do you do for a living? Like what's your job? And that's pretty simple to explain. I mean, I could go on some kind of grandiose job title explanation. I work in finance, so really what that means is, so I put on a white shirt and then I walk into the financial district and I talk on the phone with a bunch of other people that are also wearing white shirts about finance stuff. And then eventually, after I'm done talking to them about finance stuff, I go home, I take off my white shirt, and then I go to sleep and rinse repeat. And I have to say, I love it. I love finance and I love talking to people, so if I can do that all day, five days a week, sometimes six days a week, I love it. It's, it's extremely fun for me. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for everybody. It seems like nowadays, finance is more in a structural decline. It's not really what the cool kids are doing anymore, like tech. So if you can get into tech, it seems like that's kind of the place to be. At least that's the vibe that I get here in San Francisco. Now, San Francisco is not perfect for all of that. I mean, the housing is pretty damn expensive. Like, I can tell you that if I could cut out of my lease right now and live out of a cardboard box on Market Street, I definitely would. And I'm not even kidding at all. But back to the original question, I work in finance, I wear white shirts, and I talk to people. There's no reason to make it any more glamorous or exaggerated than that. God, what was the last one? Oh, that's what it was. The military. That's the other question that I get so often is asking me about my kind of relationship and experience with the military. And it's actually pretty simple. So in college, I was part of the Naval ROTC Marine Corps Scholarship Program, which basically means they pay for all four years of your tuition. And while you're in college, you train with the Marines. Now, keep in mind, this is campus training. So this is like you do physical fitness. You learn about Marine Corps tactics. You take like naval science and warfare classes, but it's not all that intense. It's not like real Marine Corps type training. And then during the summers, instead of doing internships like the rest of your classmates are doing, you go to certain training camps like Officer Candidate School, which I graduated from in August of 2013, Mountain Warfare School, and Officer Candidate School is not that hard, but it's not very much fun, okay? It's not fun. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but there's a lot of yelling and a lot of running and not a lot of sleeping and the Quigley. They kind of just shove you into this like mud pipe. It's not very fun if you're a six foot four individual that can get kind of chunky sometimes, especially when going through mud, but it's kind of fun to look back on. Definitely not that much fun while you're actually doing it. So once you complete your four years like I did, you actually commission as a second lieutenant into the Marine Corps. Now, I had kind of a unique situation because believe it or not, on commissioning day, as I was sitting in my dress blues, I actually decided to voluntarily decline my commission and not become an officer in the Marines just because of this other investment banking offer that I had and it's really what I wanted to do with my life instead. Now, that's nothing against the Marines. I think the Marines are a tremendous organization. I think they've instilled so many great things into me, but I love finance so much. I love working on YouTube so much. I just did not want to do the military with my life, even though I think I... I gained so much from the Marines, they're such a tremendous organization, I have so much respect for them, I, I can't say enough. I can't say enough. So I guess now I have to answer that question because I really brought it up. Should I join the Marines? And here's what I'll say. In my experience, with all the different Marines that I dealt with, the very best Marines are the Marines that 100% want to be Marines. Not the guys that want to join the Marines so they can say they're in the Marines. Not the guys that join the Marines so they can wear some kind of snazzy uniform that they think will impress a bunch of women. In my opinion, the very best Marines are 100% dedicated to being Marines and doing that with their lives. Which is why I made the decision that I did. I wasn't completely at 100% conviction that I wanted to join the Marines. And I think that was the best decision for me and the Marine Corps. And I think they've instilled some great things in me, and I'm glad that I made the decision that I did. All I'm gonna say. On a bit of a lighter note, the Marines is actually kind of hilarious. Just purely the training that I did. Keep in mind, I was never deployed, never active duty, but even just the training that I did, in hindsight, pretty hilarious. Like, there's so many different people that you meet from so many different backgrounds, but you're all trained by these terrifyingly impressive people. Like, the type of guys that looked like they ran the gauntlet of like selection after selection after selection of like terrifying yet brilliant people and then they train you. It's 
pretty amazing. Like, the type of guys that are just gigantic, yet super agile, just in general, the type of person that looks like he can come up and just snap your forearm with his bare hands or something, that's like a sergeant instructor or a drill instructor in the Marines. And it's kind of hilarious and terrifying. But that's really about it. Thank you for taking the time to peer into my extremely, extremely tiny apartment with a decent view. Okay, bridge, Alcatraz, Coit, Chinatown-ish. And we can end with a close-up. I did just want to say thank you very much for watching. I can definitely do this type of video more often if you would like, with much better lighting and better production quality and more dank memes, because that's clearly, yeah, triggered. I, we can go back to triggered if you want. But thank you very much for watching. It really does mean so much to me when you produce things that people consume on the internet at the rate that you guys do. So just thank you for being you and watching this video and me in general. This is rambling status. I'm just gonna cut this off right here and just- My couch is not at all comfy, by the way. Like, you sit down in it and you immediately feel unwelcome.